Hello, my YouTube family. This is Dr. Lee, and I'm again coming to you with another one of my videos. This one is for Pearson View, who's now uh, being called Credentia. And what I'm going to be demonstrating to you is skill number four, which is to assist with the use of a bedpan. Okay, so this one will be done on your partner. So on a live person, I will be demonstrating on a mannequin, but it will be on a live person. And what's unique about this particular skill is that nothing is in bold. None of the steps are bolded. So we'll talk about this toward the end. So I'm going to go ahead on and step out, come into the client's room, and we will begin this um, demonstration. you doing? My name is Dr. Lee and I'm here to put you on the bedpan. Is that okay with you? Super. First of all, I see that you are not supine, meaning that you're not flat in bed. So I'm going to go ahead on. I see that the bed is low and my wheels are locked. So I'm going to go ahead on and put your head down so that you're flat in bed. I want to get you all the way flat, supine. Okay, great. Good job. I'm going to pull the curtain to provide for privacy. And then I'm going to go ahead on and wash my hands um, and get my supplies and I'll be back. So when I come back, my hands are already clean because I'm washing them and I'll be back to get you on the bedpan. So for your supplies, you would need a bedpan, toilet tissue, wipes, and four gloves. Okay. Now, um, Pearson View, whose credential does not um, count off with the client if you don't put a towel or something on the table. That's not one of the checkpoints that's listed um, with Pearson View or credential. And we'll talk about that toward the end. So I have my bedpan, my wipes, and my toilet tissue. And two pair of gloves. Now, I must have on gloves before I go to put the bedpan under the patient. That's the guidelines. You must put on gloves before you put the bedpan under the patient. So I'm gonna go ahead on and put my gloves on now. And I'm gonna turn the camera just a little bit because I want you to, I wanna talk about something here. Okay. The bedpan that I'm using is a standard bedpan. With the standard bedpan, this area here has like an indentation in the middle, and it's an area here, indentation area on this side. I'm bringing it up so hopefully you, you, can, you can see that, okay? When I go to put this particular type of bedpan under a patient, standard bedpan, I wanna line it up with the person's butt cheeks, the crack, and butt cheek. It goes directly on the person so that it lines up with the person. Butt cheek, crack, butt cheek, this way. If you put it the opposite, the, with this part up against the buttocks, you will not pass this skill. So you have to make sure that the bedpan is placed correctly under the person. <clears throat> now that I know I want this what I call like butt cheek crack butt cheek against the person's area. I'm going to say, Miss Mary, I'm going to just move the cover back a little bit. And if you can bend your knees and raise your hips, we'll put this bedpan up under you. Pearson View credential does not require that you have a pad under the person when you're putting the bedpan under the person. That's not a step in uh, for grading for this particular skill. Okay, so Miss Mary, if you can bend your knees and raise your hips up, I'm gonna put this bedpan up under you. Okay, good job, great, is that comfortable? Now, <clears throat> I just went up under the person's private area around their buttocks. My hands are dirty. So before I do 
anything else, I need to take my gloves off, both, put them in the trash can, and say I am washing my hands, okay? Now that my hands are clean, the patient is laying flat in bed. I need to put the patient up a little bit. The guidelines doesn't say how high to raise the patient. I just need to make sure I elevate the head of that bed if I wanna pass this skill. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say, Miss Mary, we're gonna raise your head up, okay? And I let that head of the bed come on up. You doing okay, Miss Mary? Just go up just a little bit more. Is that comfortable for you? Okay, great, good job. Now that I have the head of the bed up, the next thing I wanna do is make sure that Miss Mary is able to reach her tissue and the toilet paper. And I want to tell her what to do with each one. Because sometimes patients come into the hospital and they'll say, oh, you gave me hand wipes or a napkin. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. I, this is my first time in the hospital. Explain to the patient. Miss Mary, this is your toilet tissue for you to clean yourself with after you've used the bathroom. I want to make sure you can reach it. And over here is your hand wipes for you to wipe your hands with after you have used the uh, bedpan. Okay? I want to make sure that you have your call light. You can call me when you're through. I'll be standing behind the curtain. And once you call me, I'll come and get these things from you. My hands are still clean. I haven't touched anything dirty. You go and you stand behind the curtain. You wait for the person to say, Dean, I'm through. Miss Mary, you, you're through? Yes. Oh, okay, great. While my hands are still clean, haven't touched anything dirty, I'm just coming back. I'm going to go ahead on and put the head of the bed down flat. Okay, Miss Mary, we're gonna put your head down flat. See a pattern here. I put the bedpan on the person flat. I take the bedpan from the patient with the head of the bed what, flat. Okay, now that the head of the bed is flat, I need to get rid of all of this dirty stuff that I left for the patient. Now, sometimes people will say, oh, looking at the uh, wipes and the toilet tissue doesn't look like it's dirty. It is dirty because I left it there for the patient to use it. So do not pick that up with your bare hands. Put your gloves on now so that you can put these things in the dirty supply area. So I'm gonna put on my second pair of gloves. Okay, Miss Mary, I'm going to Go ahead on, ask you to bend your knees and raise your hips up so I can take the bedpan. On the count of three, bend your knees. One, two, three. Good job. Great. I have the bedpan that I've taken from Miss Mary. I'm gonna go ahead on and take the wipes and toilet tissue. And over here, I have an area that's called designated dirty supply area. Let me bring this a little bit closer so you can see that uh, sign. Okay, so right here it says designated dirty supply area. So I put the um, tissue and the wipes in a designated dirty supply area. The bedpan I got from Miss Mary, I'm going to act like I'm emptying something into the toilet. This is my toilet here. Okay, so I'm acting like I'm emptying something into the toilet. Shoot back so maybe you can see the toilet looking better. All right, my hands are dirty. The faucet is dirty. So I can turn the faucet on to rinse my bedpan, and you must actually put water in this bedpan. Rinse it out, and I'm gonna pour the rinse water into the toilet, okay? Now I need to dry the bedpan and leave it in the designated dirty supply area. So I'll get a paper towel and dry my bedpan. All of this while I keep the gloves on. Leave all of this in the designated dirty supply area. 
Now I'm ready to take my gloves off. Say I wash my hands. Okay. And I'm through with that skill. Okay. Let me get my little book here so we can have a conversation here. Okay. So this is skill number four for Pearson View Credential. So let's kind of go over it so we can make sure we have this skill pretty clear in our head. Number one, explain the procedure to the patient, face the patient. Number two, privacy is provided. And we provided privacy two ways here. We use, I'm gonna sit on the patient's bed. We use the curtain to provide for privacy and we also use the door, okay? Number three, before placing bedpan lowers the head of the bed. So before I even started this skill, I purposely had the head of the bed uh, elevated in semi follows position so that you can see me make sure my patient was supine before we put the bedpan under the patient. So the patient have to be flat in bed before you put the bedpan under the patient. Number five, I mean number four, puts on clean gloves before placing bedpan under the client. So sometimes I hear students say, oh, but you can't go get the bedpan without your gloves on. That'll make you flunk. Uh, you can't touch the bedpan. You don't have on gloves. For grading purposes with Pearson View Credential, I look at number four. Puts on clean gloves before placing bedpan under client. So this is what I'm gonna be graded on, that the gloves are on before I go to put it under the client, okay? Number five, places bedpan correctly under client's buttock. So we talked about how you would know the, the correct placement for the bedpan. Number six, removes and dispose of gloves into the waste container and wash hands. So immediately after I put the bedpan under the client, I took those gloves off and washed my hands so that my hands were clean. When you put the bedpan under the person's buttocks and you're in their private area, your hands become dirty. Immediately, remove the glove, wash your hands, all right? Number seven, after positioning client on bedpan and removing the gloves after you've done all of that, now you have clean hands. What do I want you to do with number seven? Raise the head of the bed, okay? Number eight, the toilet tissue is within reach. So you saw me take the mannequin hand to make sure that the mannequin could reach the toilet tissue and the wipes. Number nine, hand wipes is within reach. And the client is instructed to clean hands with the hand wipes when finished. So I gave the client two instructions. I said, this is the toilet tissue for you to clean yourself with after you use the bedpan, and these are the wipes for you to clean your hands with after you have cleaned yourself. You have to give those instructions to the client, okay, on test day. The signal device is within reach and the client is asked to signal when finished. All right? Now, you step behind the curtain. Number 11 starts. The person has said, ding! You put on clean gloves before removing bedpan. What else needs to be before I remove bedpan? Number 12. The head of the bed is lowered before the bedpan is removed. 13, ensure the client is covered except when placing and removing the bedpan. I kept that top sheet on the patient. 14, look at this. Empties and rinses bedpan and pours the rinse into the toilet. You mean after I take this bedpan from the patient, I gotta act like I'm emptying something when I know nothing is in that bedpan? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying because that is a step 
for this skill. So let's look at number 14 again. And hopefully you all have your little book with a candidate hand, handbook so you can follow along with me. So number 14 says to empty and rinse, get you some water, actual water, and pours the rinse water into the toilet. Places bedpan in designated dirty supply area. I went ahead on and dried my bedpan. That's optional if you want to dry it or not, but you have to empty it and rinse it and pour the rinse into the toilet and leave it in that designated dirty supply area. Then you remove your gloves, put them into the waste container, wash your hands, make sure she has a signal device, bed slow, and you're through with that skill. So I hope this was very clear with me going, uh, showing you how to do the skill, us having a little talk on each one of these steps, one through 17. And I know you're gonna do very well when you do your skill. Okay, good luck with it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, a like. Um, please subscribe, push in the button that's down below. Okay, that helps me to be able to make more videos to help you or other students that are trying to look for resources uh, online to help them pass the state exam. So subscribing is very, very important. All right, so with that, I'll see you. What do we always say? I'll see you in the next video. So long.